Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. So far we have understood about timing and congestion optimization in placement and different type of cells such as tapsel and tie cells. Today we will understand about spare cells in the design. We have discussed spare cells in brief in lecture 25 of physical design series but it is needed to discuss the spare cells in further detail. So without any delay, let us get started. Spare cells generally consist of group of standard cells mainly inverter, buffer, NAND, NOR, XOR, MUX, or flip-flop and maybe sometimes specially designed configurable spare cells. Ideally, spare cells do not perform any logical operation in the design and acts as a filler cell only. When spare cells are inserted in the design, their inputs either tied to the ground like this or their inputs can be tied to the VDD also like this. It depends whatever, whatever you want to do, but you have to tie the inputs either to the VDD or to the ground. So inputs cannot be left floating as a floating input is actually prone to the noise and this could result in unnecessary switching in the spare cells which leads to extra power dissipation. So sometimes it is asked also in the interview that why are you tying the inputs? So the reason for tying the inputs is that it can result in noise or power dissipation which can further lead to power dissipation. So that is why we are tying the inputs of spare cells. Now the next question is what about outputs? So outputs we have already learnt in one of the previous videos that outputs can always be left floating. So your outputs are floating because if your outputs are not connected it will not hamper as long as your inputs are connected. Sometimes even designer from their side also leave some of the outputs floating for future design purposes. Now the next question that arises is why do we need the spare cells in the first place? But before we answer that, if you observe in the VLSI spectrum, we do the partitioning first and then floor planning and then placement. Now we are learning about placement and in placement we do the placement of standard cells. So the first question that should come to the mind is where does the insertion of spare cells happens? More precisely, the question that should come to the mind is where tool does the spare cell insertion automatically in the PNR flow? So it could be options for you are before placement, during placement, after placement or after the post route is done. At which stage the tool does the spare cell insertion automatically in the PNR flow. So if you know the answer, please do mention your answer in the comment section before going further. You can still guess if you don't know the answer if you would like to hear from you. What happens in the flow is there will be certain cells for which there will be an attribute of is spare cell. If this attribute is set to true, then that cell is a spare cell. So what we need to do is, or you can say what in, happens in the flow is, this such cells are identified first. And this collection is made, that collection of, of spare cells. So such collection of spare cell is made first. And then what we do is, we will spread the spare cells. So after identifying such cells, we will spread the spare cells. And after spreading, we will do the don't touch attribute true on this. So we need to make these cells add don't touch because uh, if we don't do it, then during the placement optimization or in the further stages, it is possible that these cells get touched again. And we do not want that to happen. So for that, we will set as don't touch true. And after that, we do the place opt or you can say after that, we do the placement optimization. This is how the usual flow of automatic spare cell insertion works. So ideally speaking, during the placement itself, this automatic insertion happens. We can always do before placement, but that will be called as manual insertion. After placement also you can do, that also is called as manual insertion. Even after post route also you can do, that is also manual. Automatically tool does in this case. So this is auto, other as manual and there is always a possibility of inserting spare cell at any stage wherever you want to. Now the next question that arises in the mind is why do we need the spare cells? Generally we use spare cells because it enables us to modify or improve the functionality of chip with the minimal changes in the mask. So because of the spare cells you get the minimal changes in your mask this is very important from the interview perspective also and your understanding also and why that is the case because we can already have a 
स्पेयर सेल्स प्लेस्ड डिजाइन एंड वी कैन यूज दो स्पेयर सेल्स फॉर मॉडिफाइंग द मेटल इंटरकनेक्ट एंड मेकिंग अ न्यू सेल सो बिकॉज वी कैन यूज मेटल ओनली ईसीओ और यू कैन से मेटल इंटरकनेक्ट चेंजेस मेटल ओनली ईसीओ एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट यू कैन क्रिएट अ न्यू सेल फॉर यूजिंग इन योर डिजाइन फॉर टाइमिंग और अदर पर्पसेज सो वी ओनली नीड टू चेंज सम मेटल मास्क एंड नॉट द बेस लेयर मास्क सो वी नीड इट बिकॉज इट इज नॉट चेंजिंग योर बेस लेयर मास्क ओनली मेटल लेयर मास्क आर चेंजिंग एंड दैट इज वाई इट इज कॉल्ड एज मिनिमल चेंज and that is why it is very important because at the time of your metal tape out it becomes very important to have spare cells in the design that is all for this video we will come up with more concepts in further videos till then please do like share and subscribe to the channel and do give your important feedback in the comment section thank you